it's what is this name of the show again? Tech Tech. Okay, what what day is it? Tuesday. Oh yeah. Okay, it's Tech Tuesday. After a month of being lost in Mr. Kern's neighborhood, I have finally battled my way out, and now it's time to get back to NHTV's normal content. That is, if you consider any of our shows normal. Number five. Well, Adobe wasted no time in the last few weeks coming out with yet another pack of programs to update Photoshop and the rest of the creative suite. CS5 carries 15 programs to make your photos and videos look like anything you want. New Photoshop features to look at are Truer Edge, which makes the edge detailing even better, and this magical tool, Content Aware Fill, which, by what I can only assume is sorcery, can eliminate and replace parts of photos to make it seem like they were never there automatically. If you know Photoshop, imagine a combo of the clone stamp and spot healing brush that can make things that aren't there by looking at the area around it. Yes, the suite starts at $1,600 and can max out at over $2,500, but now you have the power to trick everyone into believing that you really were at the top of K2. Since this is the program to go the cheap way in making things exist that weren't really there, I suggest you go the cheap way and pirate it like I will. Number four, Apple has also been very busy over the last month updating software and hardware alike. The iPhone 4 OS was released to much relief as multitasking is finally included. Finally. Now you can run apps in the background and switch between with a tap of the home button. On top of that much needed update, some modern ones like folders which let you organize apps into folders on your home screen and customizable backgrounds help you get rid of those little annoyances tied to the iPhone. Apple is also in the works of creating an Xbox Live style of gaming center for its multiple game apps, most likely to compete with Microsoft's eventual step into mobile Xbox Live for the Windows Phone 7 platform. On the hardware side, Apple added i5 and i7 cores to their 15 and 17 inch MacBook Pros, and as expected, they're way faster, who would have guessed. Some new hard drive and screen options go along with that. Apple also is attempting to be Google to the punch with its own advertising service, iAds. Most users won't care about this since it's tailored to app developers, but it may change the way advertisements annoy you while you try to play Tetris. Number three. I know it's great to hear about two groups of rich jerks fighting over money, but this gets in the countdown because who is battling it out now? Activision and Infinity Ward, the guys responsible for the Modern Warfare series, if you didn't know, are in a sue fest over everything from wrongful termination to bonus payments to development rights. The story goes that Activision fired the two leads, Vince Zampella and Jason West, for insubordination which later was revealed to be Activision finding emails showing the two were communicating with EA and other competitors about ditching Activision and taking their team to another publisher. Zampella and West claimed that this was wrong for termination, in which Activision fired the two to avoid paying them the bonuses that the studio was owed after the success of Modern Warfare 2. Somewhere in there is a very legal word heavy contract that made Infinity Ward promise to get Modern Warfare 2 done by November 2009 and then would be free to work on new IPs. Basically, they didn't want to become the new Medal of Honor and flood the world with yearly sequels. However, as we know from Activision's Guitar Hero Publishing, they have no regrets about bludgeoning gamers over the head with a new game from the same franchise every eight months. So this friction in game development, which has been going on since the original Call of Duty 4 was ordered to be another World War II-based game and the IW guys fought to make it set as modern. It also never helps that the developers are arrogant gamers slash artists and the businessmen at the publisher are, well, rich businessmen. So Activision wants to get rid of the two rebel developers and keep the IW team for more releases of Modern Warfare. West and Zampella want their money and want the license for Modern Warfare to inevitably rehash it somewhere else. So choose your sides. It would be much easier to pick one if I knew who was in charge of fixing all the glitches in Modern Warfare 2. I would willingly give them all my money to actually have fun playing online again. Number two, PlayStation is sticking to their promise that they won't make their controller look like a lollipop like the Wii, because that is clearly a popsicle, sort of. Yes, I'm not making that up. Sony, not three years ago, dissed the Wii by claiming they wouldn't make their inevitable motion controller look like a lollipop. And man, are they good at forgetting their own statements. The PlayStation Move does a few steps ahead of the Wiimote in accuracy, using the PlayStation camera and the power of magic wands to get depth sensing and better tracking. There's also a joystick controller that does not in any way look like the Wii Nunchuck that can be used for intense shooters like this. See how much motion sensing is being used as he plays SOCOM 4? Truly a revolution. Naturally, there will be different packages featuring controllers and games and the PlayStation I and a bundle of a PS3 Plus controllers. They'll connect via Bluetooth to the PS3 and can be used in groups of two Orbi ones and an Orbi one and a nunchuck thing and another Orbi one. Expect plenty of Wii type mini games along with a few decent attempts at gameplay. So if you get anything from the story, it's that Sony is definitely not just copying a gimmick that is already outdated. It's totally different. And number one. Since I'm openly Apple biased, the iPad ranks as number one this week. And in super awesome crazy news, for the first time ever, we have a 
hands-on demo of the product, courtesy of eBay salesman extraordinaire, Trevor Monk. The iPad has gotten major positive reviews from everyone from the New York Times to Gizmodo. The screen keeps the Apple standard of being nearly perfect, letting you write notes and play games with surprising perfection. The keyboard is not the most comfortable, but it's easily usable for typing short notes or documents. The App Store adds tons of usability just like it does for the iPhone, with thousands of apps already available. Plus the ability to scale up nearly any iPhone app, iBooks are sure to make a must for any college student as there are already tons of publishers on board to provide digital content and textbooks. The soon to be released iPhone software will be available for the iPad in fall and will add multitasking and the other new features which means the only real drawback is no flash. Models will be both in Wi-Fi and 3G and come in 16, 32, and 64 gig storage sizes between $499 and $699. No, it won't replace your laptop or desktop, but quick web browsing, simple daily use, and classwork, there's nothing better. Except for maybe a personal assistant with an iPad. But it's all right. it's okay. I got the time of the time That's all for this week. Trevor, just so you know, I'm going to need to keep this for about a week, maybe two weeks, just for accurate reviewing. So... See ya.